All right, so we're good to go. Uh, dude, isn't it so... Isn't Bakugan the greatest thing ever? Why are we talking about that? that uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just the footage that we're, I'm going to be using is the Bakugan. Oh, so. okay. So yeah. say, why are we talking about bad show? I, it, it is not a great show, but it's an okay-ish Wii game. <laughs> if you grew up with it and you're like, what are they talking about? I'm sorry. It, 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 it doesn't hold up, sadly. Listen, listen. Al I the wish Alice reveal, The Alice no, reveal is fun. Don't you fucking fun. lie and say Alice was good. No, Alice it wasn't, wasn't good. good. <laughs> it was a fun... To it was one of the best things to happen in the show, yes, but was it good? Almost. No. <laughs> it was it almost good. It didn't do anything good. interesting, though. It was just a twist, and that was it. Yeah. All right, sure. One Piece. Time. All right. Are you, are you, are you, what's the best thing about this background recording? No. It is. It's when you and Chaz are raving about uh, Game of Thrones. We were not raving. We were complaining a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I didn't understand any of it while I was just playing this Bakugan Wii game. Well, uh, yeah, why would you? <laughs> yeah, okay. All, all right, dude. So we're, we're, being, we're starting off with Mythology Nerds Part 2 because did you know that all the Gorosei are yokai? Oh, boy. Is that a well-aged theory? I can't even say well- cause No, it's not well-aged. People are still saying it after we've seen it. Okay, no, because here's the thing. I was like, oh, uh, the, one of the Grosse is uh, a yokai. Maybe all of them will be. I yeah. thought, yeah, that's kind of limiting. I'd like if if some were other things. Yeah. And then we got them, and uh, three of them are definitely yokai. One, from what we can tell, is like a Chinese mythical animal. And the other is a big sandworm boy. So uh, not quite. Also, people seem like they're not decided on if Venus venus's horse is actually a yokai it probably is but they're not sure so okay they're not all yokai that's fine yeah but like, i i get why some, it's why I, I get the <laughs> the com compulsion people have to try and say they're all yokai because oh, i want a common theme through them all i mean the or common the theme, theme through them all just is just either they're they're monsters yeah they're, they're just they like, like, like even like a lot of them like the boar is like famous for terrorizing the countryside and the sandworms, sandworms are just are generally a nice big boys. apex predator nuisance to humanity or whatever yeah mm -hmm. like, uh, and I, that's the common thing they're all thing evil is, uh, like 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 when you look back at uh, most of the mythical zones we've seen most of them like are just are not like outwardly deities. malicious or whatever most of them are are good if anything yeah like, like you know we have like, a, like the azure the dragon is depicted as good more than it's depicted as bad yeah and like a lot of them are just kind of neutral or good like the phoenix is neutral the the y y dog that yamto has is good uh, nine tailed monk. foxes are sometimes really cool sometimes the worst the like, like dog i think is just good yeah no it's literally just a guardian deity <laughs> yeah so, so it's like, so, yeah, so it's these, like, these ones are... are, like, outright evil. <laughs> yeah, isn't that... That's the cool, like, commonality. No, the not, the weird know? thing is that we we checked out some people's theories about the, about the devil fruits. And what's weird is a lot of them said, I can't figure out what these are because they're not yokai. Like, it's like all they did was go to yokai decks, not find a sandworm, and then be like, oh, I guess it's nothing. And be like, did you ever consider? <laughs> did Oda There's create his? Did Oda did create his own yokai? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> multiple people did that, and it's like, what are you guys doing? Why can't you just accept that you were uh, like a little wrong? It's like a, a smidge, just a smidge. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, also like, like a smidge because you're like you're like three fifths right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just a. Uh, it... I'm sorry you don't have your cool epic mythological group that's perfectly lined up, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry you don't have that. So, anyway, isn't it so cool that uh, Brooke is gonna fight Venus? Okay, this is his base. Yeah, this is, this is our take. Venus has a sword that might be Katetsu. He's obviously fighting Zoro, and it's like, come on, guys, he's a really fast, really old skeleton who has a blade with ice powers. Come that's, on! That's just, this is just if Brooke was a top tier. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is just Brooke is, And I think what's funny is people made that connection and they said, ah, it's like how Zoro fought Ryuma with Brooke's soul. Which, very funny That's not the same thing. <laughs> very funny Oh uh, Yes, if we would take away everything that's unique about Brooke's fighting style. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but I, uh, I, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, of saying Brooke will fight Venus, because... There's more, there's more parallels for them. They yeah. got more going on. It's yeah, more, they do. It's a, it's more of a dynamic. Yeah. That's just that's just true right now. <laughs> it might not be true later, but right now it just is. <laughs>
Uh, all right. So uh, while we're on a kid, let's get to the next one, and that's that we need answers. Why would Oda wait two weeks? No, 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 no three oh, weeks. If you, five thing. weeks, if you count this whole break thing, and how whoever weeks after that, uh, why doesn't Oda just tell us? Why does he just oh, tell us 10 now? Minutes, like? Why te uh, Yes. Why tease us? Why I, I do know do that? people are like, haha, Roger Spaceman did a funny meme post on this or whatever, but it's like, it's a dumb thing to bitch about. Oh no, we. D oh no. We have to wait to get a big reveal while weekly reading. This is so sad. I don't care. And what a lot of people point out that's cool is it's like an inverse of most One Piece arcs. This time the villains are on a timer and that's kind of cool. And yeah. then like you can't complain about it logistically because logistics of the Vegapunks want to make sure that everyone in the world has enough time to like get ready for the presentation is like you know that's fair <laughs> i mean I, I guess like you know if you want to be hypercritical you could just say well he could just give like an auditory explanation then start over after 10 minutes with a visual one like mm -hmm. you just go on loop but hey, like man let him let him. first of all uh eccentric assholes <laughs> <laughs> Out, like like the most like logical one from what we can tell is the big robot and then like shaka but they're outnumbered so even if that's what they wanted they're not getting it <laughs> yeah but also just like isn't this just like a good fun setup for an arc like this is the literally the reason why the gorsei came down was because they still have time like, before this thing goes it's off it's literally just people like crying that's like i want reveal now I, baby want now baby want now and it's like yeah just just fucking wait you what's wrong with you come on <laughs> like you, like we've all been like like some people have been waiting 20 years for this a few weeks isn't going to make a difference unfortunately like, yeah, uh, no, no, no no actually i remember some people do like make that weird case for like oh i god forbid someone dies before the story is over and they never get the answer i'm like well okay well then at that point the problem's not the story it's that someone died that's that's such a stupid way to criticize something oh, i've never heard that before i've that's heard it a weird. couple times before we're just like oh we i don't get answers there's no okay, the story's no, taking so long to finish god forbid if someone died before they found out what the one no, piece was no i don't think anyone says that in good faith i think that's like a joke i don't think I've anyone heard, actually means that i have heard it before but again like it, i don't it's i don't think rare. they mean it that's more like a, that sounds more like a haha -ha funny uh what's uh what's next uh all oh, right i i word made it a good job word proud of oh, you oh yeah he's he's back let's go yeah. all right uh and then uh next is uh you know who else is coming back who shiki the golden lion yeah, dude, strongest rocks so pirate. Sure. He's so shit. Uh, uh, living, arguably. <laughs> 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 oh my god, he is because the rest are dead. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, like, kind of big mom might like, be dead. Elder Nyon. He can kick her ass. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right now now going by like what's canon to the story is tashiki technically alive and waiting somewhere probably okay no, the, <laughs> but that's because we have to pretend a strong world doesn't exist okay no because the thing is chapter zero has this awkward thing where like it's it, canon but the movie it's advertising isn't it all oh, right it feels canon except the last two pages don't feel very canon <laughs> <laughs> because yeah it ends with advertising the movie uh is it, uh because uh, it's kind of just like i think it is the thing of like i am big shiki fan fun fact i like him a lot so i've actually gone a lot into like understanding like uh how he was made and originally oda did intend on involving shiki with the lore more like when shanks and whitebeard talked originally shiki was going to get name dropped but then he changed his mind and that didn't happen until it fell down yeah um which kind of led to, and I think what that kind of shows is even if Oda had plans for Shiki then, all the Impel Down name drop did was advertise advertise the movie. Yeah, effectively. Because, like, yeah, at this point, Shiki's a movie villain, and that's fine. Because outside of wonky power scaling, he's a very good movie villain. He's He kind of has the problem that a lot of the good One Piece movie villain, villains have, which is as the... Uh, as the story goes on, the ideas they covered that were once unique have become a lot less unique. Yeah, like, but, but, and, like, Shiki was kind of lucky that, like, his didn't get covered to like, way, way later with Kaido yeah, and like, Big Mom. Yeah, like, thankfully, most of his ideas didn't get covered until Kaido and Big Mom. Because yeah. Kaido and Big Mom do have the whole things of, like, animal-based crew focused on, like, hierarchy and, like, terrorizing the... Uh, the village they occupy for the sake of making a stronger army. And then, like, Big Mom, uh, more so than Kaido, hyper... F Big Mom is, like, the, the old era refusing to leave, whereas yeah. Kaido is kind of the thing of, like, idolizing his other members of the old era 
and uh, like kind of like being like fuck you new era yeah yeah if you want to simplify you could say like oh they're like a evil or bad version of white like this really old pirate guy who just like wants to be a dick and like no i'm i'm gonna be the strongest for all time forever fuck the so yeah so basically shiki was did get the whereas like uh poor fucking uh zephyr every unique thing about him got replaced almost instantly (laughs) Even then, like you, even then, it was like, all right, we already Who's have already Garf. Not that unique. We already have Garf. We already have Smoker. We uh, uh, Akiji yeah, already Garf's, had his Punk Hazard scene. Garf, Smoker, Kuzan, and Fujitora, man. <laughs> He's uh, just another guy in the crowd. Oh, uh, I guess while we're on this, like this is another thing about like the canicity of some of the movie villains. And, and long story short. Uh, Shiki is is like canon, but like he's okay, never gonna appear in the main story. Okay, obviously he's appeared in the okay, especially now because before we had never seen him, but he's physically appeared in the manga. Yeah, now like, so like he's he, had speaking lines and everything. So like yeah, good, Shiki good is the most canon movie villain. Yeah, he's I, I mean he's one. he's likely never gonna do anything too important because like I remember no. this is one interview where Oda says he, he think he's gonna show up. <laughs> yeah, like like Oda once like said in an interview that like he loses motivation to draw a care or something when it he sees it happen in a movie, which is why like Alkiji's ice leg didn't get put in the manga until right, like way which later. Is funny. And um, then uh oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But Shiki is the most canon. Second most canon Uta. is Uta because, because she has a, a silhouette. silhouette <laughs> when Shanks was talking about the new generation which is, like, referencing her. Uh, and then we have the, I'm sorry they're not canon, even though you really want them to, uh, which is Zephyr and Tazora. <laughs> and Bullet, too, but I don't think oh, anyone really no wants one, Bullet. No one wants Bullet to be canon, from what I can tell. Yeah, but, like, the, basically... they, they kind of tease the idea of they're canon because they have, like, these relations to other characters Oh, yeah, because they, basically, they're at the thing of, like, they their backstory connects them to the canon, but they literally aren't canon. Because, like, uh, yeah. Zephyr... Uh, supposedly trained uh, the three admirals, the three pre time skip admirals, mm-hmm. but he's never actually referenced in the manga. He's never silhouetted in the manga because he's not canon. And also, was... it turns out Garp trained out Kichi. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Because uh, no, but I think the idea is he would have trained him when he was like younger, like a like a cadet. Mm. Uh, a uh, fucking Tesoro was Dofi's slave, and Bullet was a was a Roger pirate. And action, and here's the people are like, but wait, don't those connections inherently make them canon? G- Puff, you know what I think of when people say that? Oh, uh, what do you think? Of? I think of the stupid cursed sword movie. <laughs> the guy that who's guy like Zoro's, Zoro's best friend. <laughs> yeah, but no one argues that fucker is canon. <laughs> yeah, okay. No so one like, asks, like, no... when is cursed sword boy showing back up? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like they're never referenced in the canon in like any degree. Like, slightly. All you get is a color spread of them. And color spreads, as all of us know, are not canon. (laughs) No, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Uh, Yeah, uh... Sorry, Zephyr is Zephyr's like the big one where people. Dude, can you imagine if like uh, that one color spread were like Boa, Sabo, Marco, and uh, Rage are all like together? (laughs) Oh, the the they have in canon. They have all met. (laughs) All these people uh, have met. The New Year's color spread. That's what that is. I was, I think, yeah, that because uh, it was the Chinese Zodiac one. That's where they were all on the same one. Uh, I, was, I was trying to think of that one where, like, they're in, like, a horse-drawn carriage and, like, half of the straw hats are there. And some oh, other that characters. was a popularity poll. Popularity poll. Yeah, okay, that one, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Shiki is canon. He's probably never going to come back, uh, at least not in a major way. Uh, Uta, Uta is quasi canon. Like kinda. this is, a, she's. I think she's the only character I would. I, I would honestly say, like, use the term quasi canon yeah. for. And also, uh, in all the film red promo material, people have said that Oda confirmed she exists. But the problem with that is people lie about what the film red promo material says, like all the time. <laughs> They lie through their teeth about what the hell those books said. So I don't know if I trust that. All right, woo, what's after Shiki? Uh, next is, uh, dude, did you know that Luffy fighting Zoro and Whiskey Peak was out of character? Okay, that, I think, I think fucking totally not Mark started this. It's like, guys, it's not that out of character, because one, uh, Luffy was the closest, Luffy may have been drunk. Luffy was, uh, maybe drunk and definitely in, like, a partial food coma. Two, he and Zoro had not known each other that long. Three, Zoro literally did cut down all the people who gave them tasty food. (laughs) Oh, and also four, Luffy doesn't mind slugging a crew member. (laughs) 
No, like it happens sometimes. Like he, like he play fights with Usopp sometimes, or like Momo, like, uh, he wrestles with. Uh, yeah, because and like because Zoro is like stronger and also did something worse than them, he actually like tries to beat him up for it. I know, and, and like again, like this is a very important thing. Like, like you said, like they haven't known each other that long at this point. This is literally before the Mister One fight where Zoro learns that his friends are important to him. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, like Luffy likes Zoro a lot, but also like. Zoro is the infamous evil bounty hunter guy who just took out a bunch of people, and also Zoro, like, threatened to cut down Nami, like, a week ago. <laughs> it makes sense that Luffy would be like, Zoro, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's, and also, it's just a funny fight. It's a funny fight, and I like it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Okay, uh, next is, uh, did you know that Queen is an Okama? Okay, so this is awesome, because, uh... If we go literally only off of Queen's introduction panel, I never thought he was because I'm always right. Don't don't check me on that. <laughs> I just am. Uh, uh, um, people thought he might be because uh, lipstick he... uh, name is Queen ponytail. Yeah, and kind of just like a goofy looking design. And it's like maybe, um, but then we saw Queen start talking for a while, and it's like I don't know. This doesn't seem like an old combo to me. He kind of just really wants to fuck Yori. Uh, except a lot of people, including Morge, because I remember, because I hold grudges against people who are wrong, <laughs> uh, said he's still obviously an Okama because the way, like, his reaction face is similar to Ivankov's. Huh? What? That was his reason? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, it was. It was dumb. Uh, he, and he just wasn't because people are, were dumb and couldn't comprehend that the reason Queen had a uh, lipstick and a cool ponytail is because he's a rocker. And then Shocker... He's a music man. He do the sing and the dance. <laughs> yeah, I, I think of like Kiss or like some other like heavy metal hair no, band. Uh, no, what one joke people said is, guys, he's just Freddie Mercury because Queen, and it's like, haha. Ah, oh, um, there we go. You know, that he's makes not more Freddie sense. Mercury in literally any way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah just uh, that was a funny, uh, very dumb moment in the fan base. <laughs> I don't know when they gave up on it, but they did eventually. I feel like it just quietly went away. After yeah, like quietly was... people stopped bringing it up because it's kind of obvious. Yeah. All right. And then the next is, uh, this is kind of an annoying thing, but like a lot of theorists love to just like point at every fruit in the whole story and say it's secretly a mythical zone. Like that's it's kind like, of a new trend. I think the one, probably the only one where that is acceptable is the darkness fruit. Yeah, because, like, it's, like, special, Blackbeard said. Uh, it said it chose him, so maybe it has a will of its own It's called or The Strongest Logia, which is, like, ooh, the special title. And it's it's a weird, fr- it acts weird. Like, we're yeah. explained how it works. He is literally darkness, which absorbs stuff, so he absorbs damage. And it's, like, if that's the explanation we keep till the end of the series, I will accept that because it makes sense within the lore. But if it's revealed that, no, actually, it acts weird because it's not a Logia, mm-hmm. I could also accept that. That would also make sense. Yeah. Uh, any other fruit, like people point out, Chopper's fruit. It's like, guys, Chopper's the fruit is weird. The ancient Earth God, the Yeti. Chop- Chopper's fruit is weird because he ate Rumble Balls, obviously. And I think people find out how come his hum- his full human form doesn't look like a human. And it's like, you don't because all you- hybrids keep the hair. Like Lucci yeah, keeps his hybrids, Lucci like, keeps all- his big black hair when he transforms. Uh, Ulti keeps her big wavy hair when she transforms into a hybrid. Uh, uh, Page yeah, one keeps his giant like side swept black yeah. hair in his T-Rex Oh yeah, T-Rex even form. when he's a giant fucking owl, uh, whatever he is, dinosaurus I think. Yeah. And the point is, uh, and Chopper has hair all over his body, so even when he's a full human, he's still covered in hair. <laughs> yeah, it's just a fun visual thing Oda does to like link the original character design to the transformed animal. Like it happens yeah. like, like I would say consistently like nine out of ten times it happens yeah like you know sometimes they don't keep their hair but like it's a thing that zones can keep their hair when they go full transformation so chopper doing it isn't weird either. yeah and like even and then, if we look at the other only animal who's like eaten one it's uh pierre and like he still keeps like the polka dots and everything when he transforms yeah he looks the exact same yeah in fact Pierre looks so similar uh when i went through one piece of the first time i could not for the life of me remember if he was a bird who ate a horse fruit or a horse who ate the bird fruit. <laughs> i could not remember <laughs> uh okay now uh, next is uh some people like to use the filler to power scale and pa- i know power scale is a dumb thing in general like, but, like this is like the power worst way to communities do go by different rules yeah like, if you're in like a debate tournament that outright says any uh material you can find counts then yeah 
use it. Why the fuck not? You go And, off. like, you know, I guess, like, if you're just an anime-only watcher, you kind of have, like, no yeah, choice. If you're you anime-only, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, but, like, uh, if you're a manga reader and, like, you care about the power scaling of, like, or, or like, guessing how strong someone might be or Are we whatever, bringing this up because of the because of the auger thing? Yes, <laughs> partly, because that's very funny. The auger <laughs> thing was very, very funny. <laughs> Okay, because, yeah, in the manga, Gene Bart blocks a bullet from Augur. And in the manga, I thought, if anything, that was a speed feat. Where it's like, wow, Augur's not G Augur. Gene Bart's faster than I thought. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, but then, in the anime, before Augur does this, he one-shots Cracker Soldiers with one bullet. <laughs> Gear 4 punches had trouble doing that. He's so, meaning bam, like, okay, bam. Like, like for comparison that's like if auger shot dofi and then remember how dofi went crashing across dress rosa it'd be like if the bullet did that to dofi <laughs> and then he could just rapid fire bam 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 yeah. bam bam uh, from a so distance because he's a sniper he could shit, hit yeah. things from like an island away from uh, gene bart's pretty speedy to gene bart is top five tankiest character <laughs> <laughs> Because it didn't even phase him. Uh, okay, so, so like, funny. so like, generally, like, here's my my thing, and like, why like pretty much every like anime only feat like shouldn't be used is because like nine out of ten times they're just draw nine out of ten fights that the anime does is like intentionally drawn out because like you know the anime has to fill twenty minutes and only does like a chapter an episode. Yeah, and you so like every make single every fight, fight closer. yeah, it makes every fight closer. Like you can look at Luffy and Hody or Luffy and Caesar, where like par parts where like Luffy like didn't struggle at all become a real struggle. Like like Gr Caesar catches the Grizzly Magnum and like oh, yeah, they have a little gets, push like, back. A struggle in the show. Yeah, and, or like heard. or like with Hody, like Hody like gets up like several more times and manages to like you know uh speed yeah, let's loop like in this one scene to run fight on the noah yeah or like, or, or, really? the, or, or fa the famous example where batman it, fights luffy for like five to ten uh -huh. minutes yeah, and it doesn't die <laughs> or like uh one that was uh infamous with diehard power scalers scaling dofi is in the anime the god string uh king kong gun thing is a clash in yeah. the manga it is not that it is they collide and then the god strings uh stop and the kong gun doesn't stop <laughs> yeah. um so that, that's funny or it's just like it's fine if you don't go off that but just remember that like that's not uh, oda didn't do that and it's not like oh but he was cooking it up he was cooking it up with the anime creators so it's like i'm sure he does that like every once in a while but like in all of the examples where fights are closer it's just because when you extend a fight, it's going to get closer. And also, Puff, this is like one of the only like fun insights Nux talk. Not even smart insights, just the way he described it was Nux talk way back in the day said uh, filler attacks are a mixed bag because they look really cool, but they by definition can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, they can't win you a fight. They. I, I think they... I think he was bringing up uh, Sasuke using Kirin in the final fight in the anime. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, cool. Naruto just ate a Kieran. Good for him. <laughs> Didn't do anything. <laughs> All right. So, uh, fuck, I had something else to say about this. Um, shit. I just lost it. Oh, no. Good job, Puff. Okay, hold on. Give me a minute. Um, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, apparently, uh, the reason, another the reason why you shouldn't do is because, like, the directors and writers behind, uh, uh, individual episodes like changes like they, oh, they have obviously. a few teams they cycle through and the way this comes across most and like so a lot of people have are like this was like when we, we watched this king of lightning video we're like for 20 minutes she's just oh, wondering he was complaining yes about, the colors uh, the colors uh, of hockey the color of conqueror's hockey isn't consistent in the anime and that bugs him yeah and like uh, the reason is because like it's sort of like a style uh just just a stylistic choice of whatever yeah, uh, team think of is working on the like, anime that uh, week the first time Luffy used Advanced Conquerors, it was that stupid golden blur of petals. You couldn't see anything. And then, like, in almost all preceding episodes, it's not that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, they, it's, it's the red lightning, or, like, sometimes it's, like, tinted, or, or sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's, like... sometimes it had, like, a yellow tint during that fight. Yeah. Which was, like, like, a... Like, yeah, uh, Luffy uh, can fly and do barrel rolls with a yellow aura, but also he can't do that. But also, it was just for the one episode. And when and... Luffy fought Kaido the first time, he did a he went angry Jenga Hagane mode. And and if, like, Luffy's, like, Conqueror's uh, stuff was, like, yellow, does that mean Kaido's was purple? Uh, like, whatever. It doesn't... Yeah, it really doesn't Kaido matter. You shouldn't use the... Was yeah, you sh coding his scales in Conqueror. <laughs> yeah, so you shouldn't use the anime for anything like that. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Cool. A lot of you are like, you know, being like, but dude, the anime will give us extra info because Oda was cooking up stuff with the. No, 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 it's not that. We've talked it's about that a million that. times. There's no reason to believe that. No. Uh, what's next? Uh, next is uh. Oh, do you know how hard it is to get to the moon in One Piece? Uh, comedically easy. Holy what? Shit. No, no, no. It has to be like really hard. Like Anel built like okay. A so like Anel needed a bunch ship. of slaves to do it, but that's because he wanted to bring a big fancy boat. Whereas three robots wanted to do it, and they uh, tied three balloons tiny to robots, their wrists, like really tiny robots. Yeah. So they tied balloons to their wrists and then uh, flew to the moon. Hell that's yeah. canon. That happened. That did uh, happen. Meaning that uh, for One Piece, uh, presumably a very big hot air balloon could accomplish the same thing. Big news, Morgans. For all we know, he has already been to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just like a fun fact. Getting to the moon in One Piece is really easy. That's why whenever people bring up the the moon piece theory that we'll go to the moon eventually, which I think is like a fun idea, even if the further on we get in the story, the more unlikely it seems. It's not like this stupid, how would they even do that idea? One, you can clearly breathe on the moon because Anel does. Two, it's not that hard to get there. Frankie no, give, give Frankie like, like an half an hour and he'll just hour. like, all right, I figured out how we're going to do it. We're just going to coot a burst real good. And that's all. Yeah, like, he, could make, he could just turn the sunny into like the house from up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that hard to get to the moon. Uh, what's next? Uh, next is, uh, dude, did you know that Fishman On was the worst arc ever? Like, we kind of talked a bit about this other times, but never, like, went fully into Hody. it. We defend Hody. What yeah. specifically? Okay, so, like, first we can talk about why it was perceived so poorly at first. And one reason is because a lot of fans outright state this. They thought it was going to be another, like, Marine Ford level arc, which is obviously stupid. That's so, that, yeah, that's so weird whenever I hear it because it's like, oh, wait, did you think that, like, it, every arc just had to be, like, bigger and grander than the last one? Yeah. Like, I thought the whole point of Marine like, Ford was that, like, it was going to be this big grand thing. They were going to, like, you yeah. know, go back to uh, adventures and fun for Luffy for a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then another one that people say is, um... Uh, they, the pacing? Uh, yeah, which is, like, I think it's, uh... This was one of, like, the first time... This was, like, a big example of the anime pacing get a lot slower. So that, that that's also part of it, is the pacing got a lot slower in the anime. Which led to people thinking Arc Bad is so boring. It's kind of like why people think Thriller Bark is slow as fuck in the anime, because it's also like that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of uh, what else to say besides just, like, uh, Hody and his goons uh, are uh, very weak and very ideologically flawed. But that's the point, because the idea is the legacy of hatred Arlong left behind uh, was half-baked and empty. Yeah. They relied yeah, on look, strength. I said that's so nice and short. <laughs> yeah. And like we talked about Hody in the last video. We talked about even Fukuboshi at one point, too. Yeah, all right. Oh, one really cool thing I like about Hody and his goons is uh, comparing their supposed Frishman pie to Arlong and his pirates. True. Thought. Yeah. You get, you get the Arlong pirates and uh, eight sword all style. Style, Yeah. All their fighting styles are based on their Fishman DNA. Uh, Hachi takes advantage of the fact that he has several arms, so he just uses swords. And as Zoro outright states, Hachi's not really a swordsman. They're basically iron bars to him. Uh, and then uh, Chu just uses his mouth like a gun. Kurobi uses under, specializes in underwater fishman karate, something that only his body can take. And even when Arlong eventually uses a weapon, it's modeled after him. <laughs> And when he doesn't use a weapon, he just uses, like, his teeth and his uh, nose. Yeah, and or Fishman's karate. Ultimate, and even then, his ultimate technique isn't his weapon. It's that it's that drill technique. Whereas, let's compare that to uh, Hody's pirates. Uh, a lot of them, well, first of all, they all take the drugs, which is them outright saying our Fishman DNA is, our superior Fishman biology isn't good enough. We also need drugs to win. Yeah. Already kind of admitting that they don't believe it the way Hody did. And then beyond that, you have stuff like uh, a lot of them use hammers and spears. Well, I mean, or, like, the hammerhead like that is kind of modeled after him, too. But like you, the could thing say, is... you could say he's good. Yeah. yeah, you could say, okay, yeah, you could say for Ikaros and Hammerhead, it's similar to Arlong. Uh, one who you can't say that for is, uh, and, uh, and then, like, uh, where it's like they do have the blueprints of the Arlong crew, where it's like, oh, uh, Saw, uh, Hody uses that uh, cool shark fin blade. 
uh, Hyozo coats uh, the blades in his own poison, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but, like, also, like, Hyozo oh, was, like, by far the strongest of them without yeah. the drug, so, like, it kind of makes sense, like, why he'd be the strongest. He's yeah, the only it's one like, that's, so they, like, using his fishman So, it's DNA like, they all seem simplest. like they take pride in their fishman DNA the same way um, Arlong did, but then also they rely on the drugs kind of, like, betraying that idea, yeah. whereas Arlong had, like, genuine, absolute confidence. You also have stuff like, Hody just uses, like, a trident. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know. You're a, you're a great white shark, dog. That uh, If anything, it should be two-pronged, because as Odo confirmed in the SBS, he has two penises. He does. Dude, That's I want to see I want to see Fishman uh, hentai with, with, like, two penis Arlong and two penis Hody. <laughs> That'd be so funny. That would be really funny. That would be great. I wonder if that, ex- that might exist. And we just have that to might exist. It. Holy shit, it might. <laughs> okay, it, I don't think it exists for Hody. It might exist for Arlong. Okay, that's funny to think about. Uh... So yeah, just uh, Hody's uh, Hody being cringe and weak isn't just so that we can flex our new world power ups. It's like meaningful to the story and interesting. Yeah. All right. So this next one is a is a weird and stupid, very specific four chan take. Oh uh, boy! It's the the six odas. Oh my fuck! It's fucking stupid me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's just explain it all right. Okay. The OG Oda are one and only. Uh, drew one piece from East Blue to Eni's Lobby, but then he died of natural causes, okay? So then Ode number two is, is the ambitious one who made Thriller Bark to Marine Ford. You know, he died one month it, it, during the one-month break via assassination from comparative mangaka because he was too cracked. He was too good. His sales with Marine Ford were too good, so he got assassinated. Uh, three is a hack because the time skip ruined everything. He worked on Fisherman Island to dress Rosa. He was hastily trained copy that had to, like, you know, like, be brought up within that mon- month-long Very break. Very funny we're 700 chapters in, and that's only the first three. Yeah, uh, so, uh, again, he was disposed of by weekly cylinder management when order number four was ready. So, four made Zoe and Hulkick Island, which was a glorious return to form. But then he died because cloning technology was not perfected yet. So, uh, he died very shortly after being born. Order well, number five guess- sucks. But he's a longer-lasting clone, and he has Oda number four's manuscripts, which is why Wano is only kind of good sometimes. He's currently okay. writing Etikeg. Maybe he's going to hit a stride. Who knows? Only the future can tell. So the, the the thing, so. yeah. So the thing. Wait, but you just listed five. Oh. Super okay, never mind. Sorry. Uh, yeah, five Odas. Uh, so anyway, the, the reason why I think this is interesting was just I feel like you could do this with a lot of long running series. Like, oh, okay, oh no, so- it's obviously just a stupid joke where it's just yeah. a really stupid cringe four chan way of showing that hey, look, series change off, over time. Like you could look at okay, and then uh, just weird. To- I think no, I, I can't. Actually, I uh, genuinely really like seeing mangaka evolve. I think the most fun. If anyone here really likes seeing mangaka evolve, a very fun way to do that is to read, like, very new Jump series. Like, uh, like one puff that was very fun is MASH. I read MASH from Chapter 1. Yeah. Seeing him go from drawing those uh, way too long fingers to the, like, insane, super pretty Bontai ones in the later arc was so fun. Yeah. Or, like, uh, right now, one where uh, I was talking about a friend who's also... Mocha, who's also reading Kagurabachi. Woo. Yeah. It, it's all right. Um, is... The author is very stylized and very passionate, but you can kind of tell at his current level his art can't keep up when he goes like too extreme. And it's like I'm excited to see his art evolve to the point that he can do both of those at once. Yeah. Although the thing I find interesting about uh like like the Oda thing is that like it's not even about how much One Piece changed, just how much people like certain arcs. <laughs> like yeah. obviously whoever wrote it like liked Whole Cake Island, but not Dressrosa. <laughs> yeah, because I say a lot of people hated Whole Cake Island when it came out. Yeah, people hate every arc when it comes out. One Piece fans suck. They do. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, next, uh... Okay, we have suggestions now. Okay. Um, Alright, so... A a quick comment that we can address. Uh, yes, Puff, uh, was a crunchy man. (laughs) Yes, I was a crunchy man, and I'm sorry I'll never do it again, but also, uh, one one comment said it was very unprofessional to do that. I take offense to that. Evil Puff is where I go to be unprofessional, okay? It is unprofessional. Maybe some of you don't know, but this is a side channel. (laughs) Uh, YouTube, you YouTube took after, YouTube after, took oh, away yeah, YouTube the associated channels mean. thing, so maybe some people might legitimately find this one first because of my stupid thumbnail game. <laughs> Which, oh no, that's that's how you can tell Evil Pub is unprofessional. Oh, the last like the last thumbnail, uh, isn't it? Japan hates trad wives. Yes, Japan hates trad I, wives. I came up with that because I'm riffing Hirohei. 
who sucks <laughs> yeah okay and then like and like instantly like it's like got like two point like six k views right now which is pretty good for a, a stupid side or, channel or video the and then my main is... channel because my thumbnail <laughs> game is like i want it to look kind of nice is like all right my zero video has like 1.5 and the fairy tale one on this one has like 2.8 now <laughs> which is a little goofy yeah um like if i don't make a one piece video like i, I get like 2k views <laughs> Which is like the opposite of here, where it seems like when we don't do One Piece, it does better. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very funny. I guess because, like, uh, you know, now we're like our thumbnails for like One Piece are now like part eight, part nine, whatever, but like whenever we. Oh, you might part... want to stop numbering them. Yeah. You might yeah. Want to that might be a good like, idea uh, to keep like the. the, the instead the of calling this more. number nine or whatever we're on, you call it like uh, bad One Piece opinions and you like. Dumb label One Piece it, opinions, uh, 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 stupid no, like, One Piece opinions. Or you could even just do bad One Piece opinions and then you do like. Like, you, like, name this one. Like, this is Bad One Piece Opinions. Uh, and then just bring up, like, I don't know. The like, six Odas. The and then I have, like, a silhouette of six Odas. Okay, we're them. not doing that for the thumbnail. I'm like, terrible. I'm not going to get any clips. Uh, uh, what's, uh, what's next? Are there any uh, more suggestions uh, about All right, One so uh, we got suggestion about uh, Straw Hat Wano fights for a week, not including Zoro, Sanji, and Robin. What do you think about that take? Straw Hat. Okay, so. Wait, did they, did they include Luffy in that? I in don't. Week I, I, I. Maybe, but like okay, they, well, they didn't mention Luffy versus Luffy. Kaido is weak. I obviously disagree with that. We've talked. I think about they only Luffy. mean like Nami, Usopp. Okay, so they mean like subordinate fights. I think okay. I think that's what um, I mean. Uh, they named the better ones. Like obviously, Robin's, Zoro's, and Sanji's are the three best subordinate fights. Yeah, they're the ones I like the most. And yeah. then, uh... Uh, uh, and then I. Uh, okay, yeah. part of the reason you don't like Nami versus Usopp very much is just because like bad expectations. Um, Dude, Whereas, I like, wanted I wanted the whole shit out of the, 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 the brother sister comedy the, duo. I wanted the brother sister comedy duo to get raid to raid get failure. pranked by Usopp and Nami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're talking like the raid fail again. Sound like raid fail. Uh, no. Um, but I I do like what we okay. The basically the trick is we thought the Usopp uh, and Nami versus Page One and Ulti would actually be that. When in reality it was uh, Nami versus Ulti and then Lin Lin, Usopp, and Page One are in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, because I do like, I did like Nami's stuff this. And I did like, because here's the thing, Usopp did have great moments this arc, it just wasn't from his fight. His arc was no. part of it, but his best moments were with Izo and Kinemon and Kiku. Yeah. Uh, and then the Frankie fight, yeah, it was kind of whatever. Frankie yeah. always gets like kind of weak fights whenever he gets them. That is that. Senor Pink. Yeah, Senor Pink yeah. was like a we weirdly like I'm not like the biggest fan of, of his Fukuro fight. Like, uh, yeah, um, no, Fuk I think the Fukuro fight might be like the weakest uh, one at Water Seven, and yeah. Frankie got two in Water Seven, which is yeah, crazy. like Nero was pretty fun. Like I love Frankie Centaur. Was, I love okay, uh, like Fukuro and Nero are basically just both haha funny and they explain uh how frankie's body works yeah and then Which... uh, for, for like uh, sasaki uh i think like the fight itself like the choreography was like fun and i like the gags yeah, in it. but it. also like when it comes to like oh uh, what did they, frankie, their they, dynamic they... wasn't like particularly there was like fight. almost no dynamic with them it was just they're two big I'd strong say, guys I'd who like, say, fighting like head the to best head. dynamic you could do is sasaki is like stupid and headstrong whereas frankie is like smart enough to like uh, jump out of his thing where it's like that's probably the best you could do and it's like yeah, yeah. And like the thing is i remember like a lot of people like you and me thought that maybe like a uh, like frankie okay, but being again, a former captain was gonna do is not a criticism yeah it's not but like it, it, i guess it just kind of shows like maybe there could have been done they could have done yeah, something more you maybe sound like a raid failure. maybe i just sound like someone who doesn't like the fight that much maybe that's just uh, who i am you sound like a raid failure. no because it's like a no because no uh, i think the prediction i made is husu and sasuke were kind of rivally so I thought, oh, maybe they'll, like, fight Jinbei and Frankie, because Jinbei and Frankie are ex-captains, and Sasuke and Husu are ex-captains. That didn't happen. And I was like, oh, okay, I was wrong. Whatever. Which is how you should react when your theories are wrong. <laughs> 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 you should go, oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Was, we actually uh, just got a comment one day ago. Uh, we did? Uh, or was it? Yeah, okay, so the reason why people thought the one running was disappointing, uh, slash they thought the fight wasn't over, was because Kaido didn't have a proper flashback and didn't use his awakening. And, yeah, uh, uh, okay, I, like... too thought, I too thought Crocodile wasn't defeated at the end of Alabasta because I didn't get his backstory. I yeah, too no, okay, thought that. Okay, okay, just like the thing is like, the, the awakening point specifically uh, yeah, is just like, alright, like, uh, I could kind of see why you'd expect Kyro to be awakened, but like Shocker, I guess he just wasn't, or like if he was, maybe. Or he like... was and it wasn't stay. Either way, I don't care. Yeah, it's not like that important, I don't think. No, but uh, 
I, I guess the, oh, he might power up again thing is fine. But the we didn't get a flashback thing is actually stupid. I, mean, because, I, yeah, I like, guess, like, to be fair, like, because Awakening is brought up in the arc and then it's not specified for Kaido, I can see why you would expect Ka- Kaido to like No, no, I think, I, I think... I think that, that expectation just, is fair. I think that expectation is fair. No, that justification is, is better that, oh, maybe he's cooking another power-up. The ba- uh, Whereas the other one, bad justification. 100%. You're dumb. Oh, why didn't... Oh, he didn't get a full backstory. First of all, he literally got a backstory as he was getting defeated. Secondly, again, that's like being like, Oh, dude, I was positive Moria was going to get back up. When Zoro was fighting Kuma, all I was thinking is, Damn, when's Moria going to get back up? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, this is another thing. Like, we look at the last Arcovic Island. Kratokuri got his flashback after his fight was over. So, like, it can happen after. Yeah, no, th- that, one just feels like, that one just feels like stupid expectations. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Because if uh, not, this video is kind of short, and I do have. Eight no, we still have other. We still have other uh, suggestions. Uh, Good. Okay, so Anel should have killed Gonfall and Wiper for the epic stakes, which is just I, I think a. Take oh, so all the commenters said that. Uh, I've yeah. never heard that, and yeah, it's dumb. Uh, Gonfall is, I guess, old man, and Wiper is I don't know because he's cool, and we need to kill cool people. But no, um, uh, Wiper and Gonfall living, and then getting to rectify all their like shitty uh, interactions in the past is nice and good. And like thematically, why should Wiper die? <laughs> <laughs> Like, 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 what is Wiper dying? Like, you, like, again, like, Gone Falls Old and represents, like, the old ways of Skypea. So you could, like, maybe, like, finagle your way into way away. That would make thematic sense. I don't think you can with Wiper. No. Because like, he's, what... like, the light of Shandor, and the whole point is the Shandorans uh, come back. Yeah. They, like, return, and they get to, like, they get to reclaim the... yeah, some they... societal power and, like, a place to live. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so like, like maybe maybe you think Wiper should have died for that or whatever, but like I I don't want him to die. I want to. Yeah, I, like, I, why? I, it's like, like it's also just like One Piece's tone. Like something like that could happen in like Game of Thrones, but this is this is One Piece. That okay, like, like this is actually one term that I've heard recently that like I feel like is ten times more useful than plot armor. It's called tone armor. Where it's just like yeah, if your series is generally oh, like no, hard, I don't want to see people using tone armor because they'll use it as an insult. Yeah. And not just it'll have the same problem as plot armor where people use it as an insult and not just like a discussion term yeah uh, uh terrible uh, uh, do we have any other comments uh, okay so this is just a, a weird one we get sometimes and uh we do not have a discord server oh we well, don't oh, sorry, yeah, when we mention discord we mean the one we're active in with our friends <laughs> yes we have one with our friends uh we do I, this channel does not host a discord server i'm sorry that this would point. Be host- Maybe if we're a bit bigger, we'll consider yeah, that. Maybe, maybe, how big would I even have to get to like, justify running a Discord server? Yeah, like, your main channel is not big enough to justify Like, this isn't that. my Let full-time alone. job by any means. No, it's not. Like, oh, okay, well, uh, the side channel doesn't, need, isn't even on a subs to get monetized. No, not even close. Oh, <laughs> we're not good. even halfway that's there good. yet. We clickbait literally just because it's funny. Because we're not getting money out of it. <laughs> no, we like like literally like evil pups where I go because I don't care about it. I just rave with my friend about stupid anime stuff. I mean, we stuff. care if the audio is so bad no one can hear us because then we're mad that we wasted two hours doing nothing. Yeah, uh, so uh, <laughs> I come uh, here just to like, goof around with my pal uh, are there and just any... make oh, stupid, right. disgusting are there thumbnails. Any... Are there any other uh, comments? Uh, yes, we have a few more. Uh, there's this theory that Mihawk is a celestial dragon, which does not seem we've, very we've likely at all. We've seen a couple of those, which is, like, it's possible. Like, I can't deny it. It's just, like, I, I don't find it that interesting. And I hate when people bring up the, the like, cross imagery to justify it. So it's like, guys, he's a vampire. <laughs> he is a vampire. That, that, that's literally the reason for all the cross imagery. Yeah, and like I feel like uh, when it comes to, like Luffy's mom being a celestial dragon, I feel like that's also becoming a lot less likely as the story goes on because now we have both Bonnie and Shanks, whose parents are are, are like you know kind of like fallen children of celestial dragons. Maybe like Shanks does not confirm yet, but it seems very likely. Oh, so, like, Shanks if the story, is like, he's so, related to Garland. <laughs> yeah, so like if the story wants to explore the idea of like a celestial dragon raised outside of Mary Jo and all that, or like a descendant of a celestial dragon who was like not welcome we there or whatever we already have a few examples to work with we don't really need to give that to luffy i guess not uh, right. so like, uh it's so possible i just i just have my doubts yeah and then uh, next, next we have we have a guy with a like who gave us three okay so 
Zoro and Sanji's rivalry and how the fan bases seem to just be at each other's throats all I'm the time. I'm gonna be honest, I characters. like it. I like, I like it, it too. They're in, they're in the spirit of it. They're in the spirit of it, you know? Like, uh, oh, are so, they, are, Sanji and Zoro he... argue about petty shit all the time, and so do their fans. It's, it's Is it comedically toxic? Yes, it's awful. If you take it seriously, you're not going to be happy. So just don't. Yeah. Just don't. Just be, just, just, just laugh at, uh, just laugh. Just at laugh at the twelve-year-olds calling each other, uh, weak, pathetic fans. Just boys laugh that like Zoro's been character. fighting Luchi for half a year. Just laugh. At that. <laughs> um, he has <laughs> been. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just, just have fun with it. It can be fun. I like it. Yeah. All right. And the uh, Gecko Moria is so cool. Oh, uh, yeah, Moria he is genuinely is, like top five favorite One Piece villains for me. No, he's great. Like if. Uh... If I didn't like Hot Boy Spicy's Thriller Bark video, I'd make a Thriller Bark video my, I don't, on my own. I don't remember his Thriller Bark video very well. Um, uh, it's I think it's pretty good. one of his older ones. Yeah, it, it, uh, I think, yeah. Like, I, think um, I lose motivation to make a video of something if I know someone else made a good video When you see a good on one it. on a similar yeah. topic, that's fair. Um, yeah, especially if it's no, by a very similar channel. No, I think that one thing that we bring up is we like goofy One Piece designs. So Moria already plus 11 points there. Hell um, yeah. And then yeah, I like uh, I like I like who his character represents. I like that Moria has such a tiny, minuscule crew crew out of like a p- protectiveness because he genuinely doesn't want to lose anyone. So his crew consists of a doctor who doesn't fight, um, a guy who can turn invisible, so not direct combat, and then Perona, who who's usually invincible. only fights through a ghost form, also not direct combat. Also, Perona is his daughter. Yeah, that's canon. Totally. I love that because, like, if you if you look at the SBS and shit, you realize that Moria adopted Perona when she was actually like a little little kid and raised her. Moria is her dad, and for we can tell he was a perfectly fine dad. Therefore, yeah. I want a wholesome reunion. Dude, I wanted so bad. I, like, I was expecting like when uh when Sword was there fighting, I was like, when's Moria gonna show? When are Moria? Yeah, because Perona yeah, be because we got Perona for the hills. saving <laughs> Kobe because she's looking for her dad. That's the other thing. Like when Perona looks for Moria, it's not like a girl looking for her captain. She's looking for her fucking dad. <laughs> yeah, I remember she cried when she heard he he was still alive in the papers. Like, oh my god, <laughs> I thought he died. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I. I. Uh, so yeah, I like Moria a lot. I think it's cool. Yeah. And also, like, uh, this whole... Thrill is just a great arc in general. Uh, in part because of how the shadows work. And, like, you know, it, it makes for, like, fun uh, enemy designs. Uh, fun, like, little obstacles yeah. to overcome. Oh, and oh, it's also and just also, thematically it's, resonant. It's, like, uh... Shit, pop, uh it's me being petty. I just remembered another way. People forget how uh, the shadows work. I remember uh, we were watching another bad One Piece What If. And people said that if Luffy had uh, Gear 5 by Thriller Bark... Then uh, ores with Luffy's shadow would be able to replicate Gear Five attacks. It's just like guys. In case you forgot, the reason ores could stretch is because Moria linked up their shadows and stretched his shadow, making the zombie's body stretch. Moria would not be able to stretch his shadow into chewing on a tree, painting <laughs> it black, and using it like a baseball bat. Uh, uh, you know, this is we should probably add this to the bad opinions too, because like I know, I know. That some people it's are going to be ranting and raving. Yes, I know, but I know some people are like seething through their teeth, like about like this exact page. Oh no, but uh, this is. Oh uh, yeah, we can bring up the observation I made. Puff, okay, like the, this, this. I actually, have, I should have wrote this down. This general take that like uh, some people think like Gear Five quote opened Pandora's box on Luffy's thank you, powers best guy unquote. Ever. Yes, thank you, best guy ever. Uh, so basically, they think like all right, now it's just it's just completely untethered. They could do literally anything, like literally, literally anything, and it would work. I don't think they could get literally, literally anything. No. Uh, because no, because uh, here's the thing about Gear Five Towers. The observation I made, outside of Luffy grabbing lightning, which was new, everything Luffy's done is kind of just like a leveled up version of something he's already had, like bouncing black back the Boro breath or the uh, the explosive venom shot from last chapter. Luffy being able to knock back projectiles is like one of his like s- level like starting abilities with yeah, deflecting gum, gum bullets balloon. and cannonball, or like even just deflecting bullets by just existing. So now Luffy leveling up to deflecting more projectiles is just like just a better version of something you can already do. And then everything else Luffy does is just like 
like just funnier ways to punch, kick, and tackle people. Yeah, like this is one thing that uh, someone else brought up to me. Just like literally everything can be like diagetically explained by just like the same way like Dopey's Awakening was, where like he can stretch the environment. That's what Luffy's doing too. He like gives things and people, other people, the properties of rubber to make them. No, act the also, same he way summons he paint, which is just funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other than like like literally like grabbing lightning and summoning paint are like his two new abilities now. So, and even like, then, grabbing lightning is like Luffy's immune to lightning. Yeah. So, like, presumably he grabbed it, made it rubbery, and then threw it at Kaido. So, uh, th this Pandora's box we're talking about is just Luffy can just grab paint out of his pocket now, I guess. Yeah, so when Luffy does a goofy attack, he might do, like, a little bit of a Looney Tooney thing, and that's kind of it. Otherwise, it's pretty consistent. Dude, does he have, does he have hammer space? Does he have hammer space now? Does he have, have hammer space now that, that I don't know what ability? that is. Hammer space is the ability that some cartoon characters have to just pull shit out of their ass. Oh, that's the name for that? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, do we have any other comments? <coughs> we have... Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, t talk about how Oda obviously hates Sanji's and Vice Admirals. Okay, I saw... Okay, what's funny is... Oda hates Sanji was mostly just a thing during Cold Cake Island because people didn't understand why it was meaningful that in the arc where uh, Judge hated Sanji for being more than just a human weapon, Sanji uh, did things outside of fighting. Yeah. Just idiots. But I think after Wano, where Sanji got like a bunch of good shit, people kind of shut up with that. Whereas Oda hates Vice Admirals. I think it's more like for a long time in the fan base, we assumed Vice Admirals were like really strong. <laughs> And, then they and to be weren't. fair, I guess pre times they were. Dark is. Yeah, but I most guess of them. Most of them. Virgo are. is. Virgo is okay. Strong. Virgo is very strong, but the rest, not really, because it's Smoker like, is kind of strong. Uh, Smoker is hopefully much stronger the next time we see him. Uh, <laughs> it's kind. It's kind of just like a. Yeah, the vice admirals just uh, uh, ain't that hot. Their their powers range a lot from person to person, which is like yeah, that's fine. Cause like I remember, I think like when Dress Rosa was ongoing. A genuine question uh, people argued was Zoro versus Momonga. How close? And a lot of people argued it would be high to extreme diff for Zoro. Yeah, I, I know some of the reason was because of that one filler scene where yeah, like that, that's like, what usually sparked the debate. Yeah, it's kind of just like yeah, for a while, Z like Zoro versus Momonga was like a worthwhile conversation, and now it's fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. Um, which is fine. It's like Zoro, like Oda hates Vice Admirals. It's more like. Vice Admirals are kind of just, like, disposable mooks. The funniest thing about them is that most of them are, are named after dog breeds because they're military dogs. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, they're, uh, they're just... Yeah, they're or just, or Momonga means flying squirrel. That's fun. Yeah, Momonga means that that's because Zulus, because Momonga is going to betray the Marines. He's not at all. Ah, uh, well, then what about Ooh. Strawberry? What, what, what do food and... Food Strawberry and is uh, a Rear Admiral pretending to be a Vice Admiral. Okay, but what about as blue? far as I'm concerned? All right, what about what about bluegrass? Who the which one is bluegrass? Uh, she's the she's the old lady who can ride stuff. No, I'm pretty sure hers is a dog breed pun. Oh, okay. No, I, everyone at uh, Egghead is people checked, and that's true. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Onigumo might not be, but his is probably a spider pun because you know. Yeah. Spider. So they're all like <laughs> generally based off animals or food. <laughs> Yeah, but they're usually dogs. Yeah. Uh, though I don't think Oda hates Vice Admirals, I think people just overestimated their importance. Yeah. Which you can kind of tell by the fact that he keeps just introducing them as just random mooks. Kind of yeah. shows how nothing... Like, this arc, they are equivalent to, like, the the plethora of captains that we got at the end of Eni's lobby. <laughs> yeah, or, like, uh, I guess, like, to maybe to be more charitable, they're, like, headliners in Wano. They kind of feel no, like I, that, where like the oh no, kind of strong. Like comparing mooks. them to the captain. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I guess like it kind of comes from this place where like uh like Smoker like the first cat like he he was a really strong captain early on, and sometimes we meet a kind of strong captain, and then like even uh in Punk Hazard well, we had like two strong vice admirals who were probably well. In also important. like another defense is the level after vice admiral is fucking admiral yeah there's a big there's a big jump and uh, the story is crossed it by now <laughs> yep it's really funny uh yeah. is there uh, is there any other comments we have better? one more comment about uh people who this guy's annoyed that sometimes people bring up the hero's journey during analysis for no reason other than to just sound smarter okay that's stupid for a lot of reasons like one that people bring up is sorry i'm dumb and i forget what it's called but um i don't know if one piece does because i haven't checked but uh 
a lot of uh anime and manga follow a uh an act structure that is uh more often seen in japanese stories i don't remember what's called but you can it's a four act structure so there's that and then also just the fact that shut up idiots stories don't need to follow your freaking plot maps no i know and like the thing is like it's it, it's such a good excuse for people just to recap and call it analysis like i remember oh, I was, it's so uh, this is this wasn't one piece this was a like a devil may cry video that i was seeing like way back in the oh, day course. right and then it was just like oh okay now i'm gonna analyze the story you see dante's journey mimics the 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 hero's journey hero's journey because you he see, develops and grows no like like literally and like they tried to like yeah, really <laughs> they tried really hard to bullshit something like one of the first ones they, is that they meet a mentor right in Devil yeah. May Cry 3, Dante has no mentor figure, like, at all. But he said, well, one of the early bosses, like, this really old Cerberus dog guy who, like, you know, tries to insult him and calls him, like, a kid who doesn't understand much or whatever. So I think he's kind of the mentor figure That's early funny. on in the story. I'm like, That's dude, funny. this uh, is, this so is yeah, falling basic, apart um, pretty quickly. Uh, the, the, no, uh, forcing, like plot maps and plot rules is like a very uh morge head thing to do <laughs> except like morge kind of like makes his own sometimes which is no he, he does both he does he's he's a unique guy um yeah, yeah just uh don't Both like do uh, like the hero's journey is i think more so interesting from an anthropological point of view to just be like isn't it cool that throughout history through all these different cultures hero's journey is like a very common uh, thing you can notice because this is a type of story we as humans typically find satisfying isn't yeah. that interesting well, i think like, that's the most interesting way to go well yeah it. but like at the same time like so i a lot of people criticize for just being too vague to be applicable to too many things so at that, that point it's like all right well no, that's why the, I said it's the quote belly of the whale effect. is just a low point in a story which lots of stories have like no it, no but that's even then that's interesting for the same reason that's, that's why i said it's inter interesting for anthropology not for story analysis yeah uh, is that it for comments? That is it for comments. Now have we gone just... long enough for this to even be? We an are not. A, we not are at. We, we're not at an hour yet. So no. Uh, do you, Do you want to know my stupid idea for how we can fluff it? How are we going to fluff this? Uh, do you want to? Uh, do you want to go to that? I I, I have it because I was curious about it. Do you want to check that thing where Morge lists like all of the unaddressed plot points in Wano? Yes, yes, yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, uh. oh, okay. I'm streaming that. I guess. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> This might not be audible because that always happens whenever I'm gonna, I scream. I'm going to turn the volume all the way up just to, nice. on, on this thing just to be sure. All right. Can you hear it? Uh, is it... It's not showing oh. anything yet. Oh, there he is. Very... I see his face. I see his face. Okay. okay. When weighing whether or not this punch was the Wait, I think I, I think I addressed this in my in my raid fail video. I think you speed ran it. Yeah. Everything. So first of all, what is the mystery behind Zoro's heritage and why? Okay, here we go. Let's go in order. Let me slow him down. We got more actually talks kind of fast. And when weighing whether or not this punch was the conclusion to everything. So first of all, what is the mystery behind Zoro's heritage, and why is it simultaneously being portrayed as important to the story, yet is about to be completely irrelevant if the story is over? What was this was already addressed at this point with the king fight. The point is that Zoro, unlike King, does not obsess over his heritage and is able to win fights just off of his ambitions and his connections to the current day that matter. Wowie zowie. Yeah. The deal with Nidaiki Tetsu, and why did it get so much focus if it was again completely irrelevant? Uh, I um, wouldn't say so much focus, it was just kind of briefly mentioned. It was kind of just like, oh, look, we found the second Katetsu, in case you were wondering. Isn't it funny that Luffy, this absolute idiot, is carrying around this sword that Zoro that Zor would? That's why it's funny because Luffy can't, like, when he punches the Velociraptor rider while holding the sword, yeah. and Zoro's like, dude, I want that sword so bad. And Luffy's like, it's my sword, and then he doesn't know how to use it. It's a funny joke, like, I guess, like, to be fair you could say oh well, what about like you know uh chekhov's gun shouldn't this have gone to someone which like sure but also would that even be like that cool no, but, or uh, the way i view chekhov's gun is where it's like uh, a detail where it's like it served no purpose and it doesn't make sense that it didn't serve a purpose first of all i think the sword's purpose was literally just world building uh Wano and funny and, like, luffy gag and funny joke, which is a thing in the story that matters. Because, like, let, let's be real. If that was just a normal sword, this wouldn't be half as funny. Because no, it's I... funny because it's such an important I know. Sword. So it's like, Luffy, don't use it like that. No, that's a super cool sword. Stop it, Luffy. <laughs> Luffy, can I have that sword, please? <laughs> Luffy, let me touch it. It's funny. Why was Wano built up as the land of gold when that side of Wano has yet to be shown at all? What... Uh, isn't the land of gold because they have... Uh... I assumed it was Sea Prism. 
Yeah, I thought it was Seaprest. Okay, I guess to be fair, like I don't like know for sure, but like I thought that was and pretty all, obvious. Like, uh, like the also world just government... like small world building thing. Uh, something I would think about more because I've been like skimming and reading more uh, like other long fantasy series. Not everything needs a fucking direct answer. Holy shit. Yeah, and the, like again, like I feel like it's pretty obvious to see some. But also, like, he's listing he's listing things in the story that need a payoff. Yeah, and like the, the thing, is, like the thing is, like uh, like about the of a country of gold thing, like like the the monk is saying that like oh, outside forces wanted our shit, and like I assume that Seastone because that's what the government wants yeah. from Wano, and we know that Wano closed its borders to stop presumably the world government or other outside forces from taking their yeah. shit, which is Sea Prism Stone. What actually is Onigashima, and why was that implied to be important? Who is Wait, it was? Built up as the land of gold, when that side of Wano has yet to be shown at all. What actually is- Oh, they're in the middle on a separate- Wait, what- what part of this implies it's important? No, I think he's, like, just overstating, but uh, yes, I guess there is true that they just built up a small mystery of Onigashima's old name. I don't even think they did, because this is just- they, uh, they call that separate little island Onigashima, which is just name-dropping it. And also, it's cool, because it's like, oh, it's the Momotaro story, that's so cool. And then, uh, this is just showing that Onigashima's cool. Like, you could say, what is that big sword? And it's like, sure, that's a that's Oh a my question. god, dude, that was a, such a great old theory that people thought Kaido oh, was going to use that sword. Oh, did people say that we needed Zoro or someone to pick up the sword? Yeah, we need, they, people said, oh, Kaido's not doing it because he's going to pick up that sword and do some cool shit. <laughs> uh, it's like, I don't think what Onigashima is was ever implied to be a mystery. I like, mean, I, I like may, maybe, so. maybe with the whole like name thing, you could say like, uh, sure, but like, except it's named after a famous story. It's just a reference to a story. Well, yeah, but I guess like the idea is that it had like a different name at some point, so like maybe that'll be important at some point later on. But if it is, then we'll probably find out when that actually becomes yeah. important. Oh no, that's the other thing with a lot of these dropped plot points. It only works if you pretend that we can't like ever revisit ideas from a previous arc like it's like saying that like alabasta dropped the plot point on what uh pluton is yeah or where is pluton we where's pluton we didn't didn't learn say. during alabasta therefore plot dropped which is yeah. like dumb he is onigashima and why was that implied to be important who is yamato's mother what were they that's never... hey, yamato's mother was so stupid it was it's that's so stupid never the story has never like yamato had like yamato's mom was never even referenced like ever I know, like, like okay, so, like, 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 let's even look at Frankie. Frankie's parents were mentioned, but I have no expectation to, like, see Frankie's parents expect them to But at least at if point. we did, it would make sense, because we've heard about them. Yeah. Like, it makes sense to think, oh, maybe we'll learn about them. Whereas, like, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, a parent where it's, like, actually hyped up that, like, oh, I don't know, it's a mystery who they are. Uh, I guess, like, the closest thing you could think of is, I don't know, like, the fucking D-Clan. Or, like, maybe, like, Momonosuke's family, because Odin is a big deal. Whereas, like, with, uh, with Yamato, think... who their mom is, is never even brought up as, like, something you should care about. And it's like, why should you? I think, I think the reason why people cared was because, like, uh, like the whole, like, ah, uh, Oni is its own race, therefore there's a third Oni Except somewhere out there. Probably and... not. <laughs> who is that? No, yeah. it's just like, uh, yeah. Uh... Well, like, again, like, like... It's, it's just saying, like, ah, oh, this character that I completely made up, why hasn't this character I completely made up shown up yet? It why not? It, it, it'd kind of be like during Whole Cake Island. You're like, the mystery of, of Katakuri's, Katakuri's father, father is never answered. It's like, that's not a mystery. You're just asking who the dad of a character is because you'd like to know. The Kakeshi dolls in the Shogun's palace. That was the actually Kakeshi brought up. Oh, that, no, that, that was, that, I know what exactly that, that is. Be important. Who is Yamato's mother? What were the Kakeshi the Kakeshi dolls were a reference to like uh, we actually find this out like a little bit later when uh uh oh, yeah, we do Momo's like grandfather right. like may makes Kakeshi dolls. So like the fact that they were in the palace, like, you know, it's sort of foreshadowing how he used to be the shogun and yeah, how you're like, right. that he is knows right. about the, he knows about these secret back rooms, he's been there, he keeps his Kakeshi dolls there. So, so this, this is a bit is of foreshadowing. foreshadowing yes. Kakeshi yes. Kakeshi maybe maybe he the... made this video before we learned that, but like regardless, that in just goes case, to show that he was his jumping. Fault for, yeah, um, that's for, for jumping the gun. For jumping the gun, that's on him. And now we have this stupid one. Where he says, "Who was Crocus?" This is an th this is an open ended mystery from ten thousand chapters ago. Stop pretending. Yeah, no, you can't say it's a Wano mystery because that only works if this guy's definitely from Wano. Which I guess you could know say, that. "Oh, he has this hat," which we know is from Wano. But like, Little Wars Junior can also make those hats, and Ace knows how to make those hats. So if anything, all this would confirm is, at best, he he's been to Wano, or at worst, he bought it. 
<laughs> from somewhere. It's just like, we don't know this guy's relation to Wano. We don't know this guy's relation to anything. This is just some guy Crocus drank with ages ago. Is he Shiki the Golden Lion with way worse hair? Maybe. No, 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 no. He's Yorkie. It's Yorkie. It's Yo, definitely Yorkie. Let's go. Let's go. That's actually it's my like, favorite answer is that, like, that it's That is Yorkie. a funny answer because Yorkie's blonde. Um, yeah. No, it's just like a... It's not a Wano mystery. Calling it a Wano mystery is extremely disingenuous. This man was never referenced in regards to Wano in any way. The samurai that Crocus was drinking with. Why do these three numbers that... Here we go. Okay, uh, this is stupid. This is so okay. stupid. Uh, okay, let's go in order. Uh, fat one and fat one. Um, this guy... They have like, a similar headpiece, but even then, not even that This guy has similar. two big blush marks, and I guess you could say his, uh, his headpiece kind of looks like his horns. And then I guess you would... And I guess the next argument, you would say his tattoo looks like his beard, but it doesn't. Not to mention their heads aren't the same shape. Um, and then uh, nothing. Uh, Ringo and this guy. Nothing, nothing. at all. Uh, Not a no single have... thing. Uh, nothing. Uh, they're, not their hair, not the hair, face of their his shape. His and a ponytail. And then with these two, at first, then you realize, wait, this guy has cool samurai mustache. This guy has, like, curly, cur curly, mustache. Yeah, curly mustache. Curly, yeah, handle, yeah, curly yeah, dandy mustache. It's handlebar. Yeah. So yeah, uh, no, I don't. No, this is literally just like this is just brain rot being like my my this, weekly theory, my weekly Reddit theory. Why why uh, did my weekly Reddit theory we, come true? We during a break were very bo not during a break, just during like the gap between chapters were very bored and thought, oh maybe these guys were turned into numbers. They weren't. No. <laughs> that Yamato has a close bond with. And that makes sense because a lot of numbers were there before. Uh, Yamato got imprisoned. Clearly resemble the former daimyo of Wano that Yamato was in a cave with. They really don't. Who they was the don't. man Tengu Yamato's waiting? Um, either Momo. Probably Momo. Probably Momo, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just. Yeah. What about Momo? See his brand new character conflict as to whether or not he should open the borders of Wano. Uh, he decided that... not to open them. That, that yeah. was. Also, why, why would not you to expect. Open them. Wait, why would you expect that to get answered? before luffy beats kaido yeah that's weird that getting answered after luffy beats kaido makes a lot of sense because that's like a final arc resolution thing yeah like was token back from the void century and if so was to this can be answered later <laughs> there's no reason this can't be answered now <laughs> yeah like like right? think about it again like uh we're like it's just i guess there's kind of thing where like a lot of people were expecting void century lore from this because of toki's thing which yeah, just goes to like, wrong. all right, die. Like, Oda, like he's Oda's gonna keep this a secret for as okay, long uh, as fucking possible, guys. No, just so get over it. This is like saying Egghead has the drop plot point of uh, why was rocks on uh, <laughs> why was rocks on, on Beehive? <laughs> no, yeah, it was just like both, no, you, both. You, why was yeah, he on both. either one? <laughs> yeah, what well, what was the Beehive treasure dropped plot point? And it's like, no, you you all know that this random mystery. Uh, introduced during a flashback of all things does not need to get answered this arc you're disingenuous to say otherwise so yeah like remember matter? remember when uh clover said the ancient kingdom's name is then didn't get to say it like did you yep. that's not gonna get paid okay, off later this one's really stupid okay i actually went one? so hard on this on my video i remember <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> the climate okay, changes a lot in one particular country depending on where yeah. you live okay, no, bro. Okay, that's no, just no, a Puff, real life thing no, uh, Puff, that is disingenuous though because you're canadian and i'm american we're from two of the biggest countries uh wano small but counterpoint one piece countries and islands having weird uh having weird weather was set up the second we reached uh paradise and yep. uh beyond that that's like saying that like the geography of every one piece island needs to be explained like why does drum island have those weird mountains that's never answered but well, like isn't this also true for like japan where some parts of it are like almost always snowing then other parts are like yes. more moderate Hokkaido cold but yes. island nations warm not island nations the more islandy parts of japan warm shocking yeah we're just like condensed japan again it's like yeah every one piece arc has different seasons uh or, like that's the thing like different islands have different seasons and if anything that makes a lot of sense because the way it's described is each island has its own seasons right yeah like... wano is a bunch of different islands yeah like an arc of so like kind of like japan have itself own seasons it's the world building too of how One Piece Islands work, where each island has its own climate. 
And uh, also, so yeah. this isn't like an important like unexplained mystery or plot detail. It's just a cool like thing about Wano's setting. Yeah, no, that's, that's what that's I said. It. It'd be like ask, it'd be like uh, Drum Island bad because we weren't told what the weird uh, why the weird mountains were the way they were. Yeah, like I, I also in my video said like I made a whole video about like the food and one piece and the whole cake island section. You could go on and on forever about like okay, well, what's the picture of how this weird food thing came to be? You can ask that if you want, but is it a, a, a missed plot beat or whatever? No, no. It's just world building for how this island functions. It's cool aesthetics and details for the islands in this adventure manga. Yeah, have fun. The different regions of Wano, different climates. Why does Big Mom say this land has some secret related to One Piece? Now, because people... probably because Why like uh, Why are the regions of Wano different climates? Glyphs Why does Big Mom and Pluton? Uh, some of it's in this country too, isn't it? Ugh, I'm so close. Uh, it could be. It could be a lot of things. One big thing, though, is with Big Mom and Kaido, they just kind of misunderstood, like, Roger's legacy in general. Yeah, like, again, this is even something... So even this wording specifically could be, uh, like, a mistake on Big Mom's part. Yeah, and, but like, then this, this is, there this... are two things in Wano that Big Mom wants. Big Mom wants Ancient Weapon. Big Mom wants Poneglyph. <laughs> yeah. And, and, like, again, like, this is even something that, like, uh, best guy ever goes really hard against. This is one of the moments where he's smart. It's just like, all right, but, like, sentences before this, Big Mom was asking if the One Piece even exists or not. So why would you take this as, like, an objective statement over the state of what the One Piece is when she clearly yeah. doesn't know? Yeah, it's just, it's just Big Mom lament. I'm saying this land has some secret related to One Piece. Now also, like, yeah, this gets answered, probably, so shut up. Some of you might say that maybe some of these plot threads will never be addressed. Or that they can be addressed in later, later arcs. Maybe we never find out anything more about Toki. Maybe she just existed as this plot device to be able to send people to the future. Wow, you're, he's so disingenuous! He is. Wait, why would we not- Dude, we could just learn about Toki in a later arc. Like, maybe when we get the Void Century flashback. And even though Oda clearly hinted at her past being important, maybe he just forgot to elaborate on it. Now- God, that's such a disingenuous reading! Alright, I guess, like, you know, to be fair, sometimes in, like, a weekly manga, like, some drop, uh, some, like, pop Yes, but Toki drop, specifically is very disingenuous. It's I like, know. There's no reason that she'd have to be answered in one of That doesn't sound like Oda to me, but sure, for maybe one or two of those threads, maybe it's something Oda forgot or had to cut, but it is... Or you're just lying. Or it'll just get addressed later. All of those things are just threads that Oda completely booger. abandoned. And or they weren't threads at all. Also, wait, I'm pretty sure he says something before this that I forgot to get mad at. None of this on its own is proof that there is definitely more to go in the story. It is purely a reminder that there more videos every week. So to begin with, I'm going to quickly list off a large number of plot threads that are currently unresolved or yet to even be addressed in Wano. None of this on its own- Wait, yet to be addressed? How is it a plot thread if it's never been addressed? <sighs> proof that there is definitely more to go in the story, it is purely a reminder that there are a lot of question marks still hanging. And I think it's important to recognize that there are still a lot of loose threads left, as that information is necessary to keep in mind when weighing whether or not this punch was the conclusion to everything. So yeah, first, that's how he described it. And then pretty sure he has one more thing back here that I don't like. Dude, like can you that believe that like are... at the end, like after Luffy punched Luchi, they didn't like w resolve the whole Mary thing and what their new ship was going to be? Oh, that's so Can weird. you believe Just that? that that is weird. It's crazy that they addressed it at the end of the arc after the big bad loss. Can you believe they didn't address who was the shipwreck going to be by the end of the arc? Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. ...are just threads that Oda completely abandoned. And now, the second argument I see from people is that maybe all those threads will be picked up and resolved post-arc. And it's post-arc, post-climax, where all those question marks... Plenty of the... Post-climax? Dog! Plenty of things get addressed after you beat the big bad and mysteries will be answered. And some of those things don't need to be answered, like Yamato's fucking mom. And yeah, some being post arcs completely reasonable. Yeah. And to that I say, when has it ever been the case that Oda has saved dozens of plot threads and mysteries to be revealed and resolved post arc? Okay, like, uh, like A, you made dozens. half of them up. First of all, you did not list dozens, you liar. You, you, you barely, like, you listed like eight or nine. Yeah, you lying cod. Second and then B, you made up half of them. <laughs> Yeah, you made up half of them. Uh, so, yeah, and it's also like, well, so like, let's 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 say like Toki. That one's definitely something that's going to be addressed later, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plot points get brought up and then don't get addressed till later. Think of like, uh, uh, Drum Island ended with the revelation that Roger and Luffy have the same middle name. Isn't that suspicious? And that we still haven't gotten a real answer. For what wow, the really isn't that is. crazy? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Or like yeah, even like, like yeah. remember Ace? Like how like oh yeah, there, you got this message from this Ace guy who has this weird like ability to like stop the, learn... the snow, and then we don't yeah, learn we, about we, him till Alabasta. Yeah. Where it's just like yeah, things can get brought up and then not fully explained till later. That's perfectly normal. Because One Piece isn't a bunch of self-contained stories. It's one very long story. <laughs>
I think people may be confusing the fact that Oda goes hard on world building and revisiting grander big picture plot threads post arc with the notion that post arc is where we will get the resolution to all of these Wano specific threads. Because he Wano specific, like the image of Crocus talking to Laboon, which I'm pretty sure was shown during uh, Decks of the World during Fishman Island. Here's the thing, when I was listing unresolved points, I didn't include bigger picture stuff like who is Zanisha. I actually kept that list shorter than- But Toki. Wait, what? Than I could have. I tried to- You kept he, it shorter he, he, he than He thinks that have. like Toki is in large picture stuff when she's from the Void century? No, no. also, also, she, he said he kept it shorter than he could have. Like he could have listed so many more equally biting plot points as that. <laughs> if anything, I feel like there's bigger ones he could have brought up. Like, uh, the Smile Fruits in the- in Okabure Town, whatever the fuck. Yeah, like, like that, that hasn't that... been resolved yet, but that's like a much bigger deer. Yeah, like, like I, I, I would also say that I always said that would have been like a more valid thing than anything he said this whole time. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it that's because it is. So I'm so smart to keep it focused on Wano specific plot threads and mysteries. Because when it comes to arc specific plot threads and mysteries, you can go back throughout any One Piece arc you like Alabasta, Dressrosa, Thriller Bark, Skypea, etc. And in not a single one of those arcs is there anywhere near, anywhere close to, this number of arc specific plot threads and mysteries. But none of them are arc specific. They're either not real, get addressed after the big bad loses, which is normal. Like, Frankie didn't even join the crew until... Uh, yeah, like, again, yeah, like, Eni's Lobby, we don't address who's the new ship I could be. We don't address what's going to happen with the ship in general. We don't address, like, even if Usopp's going to rejoin Usopp rejoining back. the crew! That's a huge one! I know! One. That one's so easy. That one's so easy. Which is, like, his definition of... Or, like, even, like, like we can bring up, like, clean? Aokiji. Like, Aokiji comes back after the end of Water 7 and, like, talks with Robin again. Like, that's a pretty big event. Yeah to be resolved after the climax, like not even close. You might be surprised to realize this, but if you really go back and look, One Piece arcs are written very tightly over the course of the arc. Things get, things carry over all the time though. Or like, Dude, why didn't big... we address what Oimo and Kashi are gonna do after the arc before Luchi was defeated? Yeah, that's a what great question. What the heck? That's a great question, why didn't we? Why, it has to be pre luchi dude. And also better question, who are Oimo and Kashi's parents? Fuck, dude, I never even thought about asking that. <laughs> a lot of mysteries and plot threads come up, but about 99% of those are revealed and resolved. I love making up stats and also making up metrics. Like, what's his metric for a Wano-centric mystery? I have no idea. Of before the climax. Before Crocodile is defeated, we already know about Pluton and the Pony Glyphs and the Dance Pack. We don't know Objection! about Pluton! Objection! We don't know about Pluton! Objection! We weren't told! Oh my god. <laughs> Like what count? Or like even with the oh here's one. Oh, why did it rain when Crocodile was defeated? This is never answered. Did Smoker use dance powder, or was Crocodile doing what Ace did, where his fruit was so strong? Why can't it, it just be a, a coincidence was? that has a metaphorical purpose? Why can't it just be that? <laughs> it could be that <laughs> too, but we story. weren't told. We weren't told which one it was. That's an alabasta centric plot point that was never answered. And what Baros has actually been doing before Anil is defeated, we already know the secret of Jaya and what happened to the City of Gold and. The Okay, but, like, there's no, like, secret. All right, but we didn't resolve how the Skypeans and Shane did get along after the fact, or if they yeah, even would. Yeah, we learned that afterwards. The truth of Noland, all of that. By the time Doflamingo is defeated, we already know about his true identity, the truth about Or, the and this is another thing, uh, maybe this wasn't, like, brought up before, but, like, Robin, like, encounters the Poneglyph after, uh, after she, t t uh, after Enel is defeated. Like, that was yeah. a big thing, and then finding Roger's message. That was post Enel defeat. Recoup, across the board, across all major One Piece arcs. Wait, all what? I'm dumb, man. Almost every mystery and plot thread of the island is resolved by the time the villain is to be defeated. Also, like, yeah, no, he compares shit like Doflamingo's backstory and the way he's controlling the town to Yamato's mom, a cover story from Fishman Island, and some guys vaguely looking like some other guys if you squint for a week straight. <laughs> and that's what makes the climax. The climax. It is the resolution. Everything. Climax is not the the climax and the revolution. And the resolution are literally different points on the plot graph, Morge. You know this. The climax is you where bring you up the, the plot mountain. graph is your best and, friend. You should know and the this. The resolution is at the bottom of the little mountain on the plot graph. You should be well aware of this. You fucking liar. You use it every <laughs> other video, buddy. The, light, the truth of what is at stake, what is really going on in this land, what is being fought for, all of that is checked off, and then the villain is. Okay, wait, okay, wait. Let's, let's, I get that. I get. This Wait, is no, a dead, I, I, I get like, that what? this is a dead horse, but I'm having so much fun right now. This <laughs> is a terrible point. Okay, wait, I just want to listen to this part. Of what is at stake, what is really- What is at stake? Like, almost fell. 
Iconic Dude, we're, not, we're not gonna we're not gonna know what's at stake until we find out who Yamato's mom is. No, what's at stake is that Kaido's going to enslave the Wano citizens and ruin everything. That's what's at stake. What's going on in this land? What is what's going on in this land? Wano, uh, Kaido took over Wano with Orochi's help. We learned that during the Odin flashback in like great detail. <laughs> <laughs> like great detail. Being fought for all of that is checked off. What is being fought for? Same thing. And then the villain is defeated. Now we might get one, maybe two things answered or revealed at the end of the arc. Small little hanging questions or maybe- Small little hanging questions like will Usopp rejoin the crew? Maybe a character thread here or there to get its conclusion. Oh, I guess that's a character thread here or there. My mistake. Uh, who's the new shipwright is a big question. That was like, that was like literally the question that- That was the, the question saga. going into the arc, the big one. And even the no, people was... still people were still arguing whether it was gonna be Frankie or Polly, which like you yeah, know it's kind of obviously Frankie, Polly. but like people were arguing yeah. for Polly up until the end. But that's it. By the time we get to post villain defeat, the story pretty much always has a nice bow on it. But Wano is this one arc that is still filled with countless question marks and mysteries. Now with yeah, dude. Also oh. like like just being like if you're a good faith or fasting, you'd say well because Wano is stupidly long and we're getting closer and closer to the end game. Maybe it's just leaving more open ended mysteries for the next arc. Like like Rocks is a big one. Like yeah. Rocks we. Know, like, we know next to nothing about him, but obviously yeah, he's like, being saved uh, for later. Or like, even with how long Wano is, with how long Wano is, doesn't that naturally mean that the resolution after we beat Kaido will also probably be pretty long? Um, and even then, also, it wasn't any longer than, like, Annie's Lobby. Yeah, uh, this is something I always like to bring up, is that some people forget that, like, Annie's Lobby, like, you know, if you don't be an idiot and separate it from Water 7, it's almost as long as Wano. It's super long. Yeah. A lot of mysteries. And if you're cool and combine it with Long Rain... <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Does Kaido's defeat here seem final? Yes. All right. Bad video from Morage. E easily Not the great. worst raid fail video he made by like a mile. I, yeah, I guess like to be fair, like it was when he was like, like you know, most desperate thing, just one more funny thing to end on. One yes, thing to end yes, on. yes, yes, okay. yes. One more haha -ha funny to end on. This is the same video, I think. Are you in? Yep. I'm in. Beautiful sense of climax. Compare King Kong Gun against. <laughs> Oh my god, I went to what just happened with Kaido. This is the I went so hard on this in my raid. I spent like two minutes on this in my raid filler because okay. it's so now, hopefully, dumb. Hopefully, uh, those of you so uh, with dumb. brains oh understand god. why this is not a fair comparison. Uh, I'm going against to what just happened with Kaido. This is the like literally, he's scenario. hiding exact like 90% of the page. Like, you can see part of the page that he cropped out in the corner. Here. No, like that's that's they like a tenth of a page he's comparing to. No, to... I know this is like uh, the bottom, this is the bottom left corner of a page. Also, like, again, this is one thing I bring up, like, like even in the comment section, like, you know that this was, like, three double-page spreads back-to-back. -back. You can't call that, like, a quiet resolution. Oh, you no, can't it call was that... huge. And then you can't then... call that, like, a like an anti-climax. Like, maybe you no. just think it's bad, like, sure, fair. But, like, let's say, like, you know, a double-page spread is still a spread no matter how you slice it, okay? The same is true for the gun. And if you want to say, like, well, that was the final impact well, for Dofi right there, if you go to the next chapter afterwards, you can find this little plan of Dofi, like, plopping into the underground uh, yeah. uh, toy slave place. Also, um, also like, if we want to be like really annoying the technical like final final for kaido like when it's told kaido lost is when there's the giant explosion <laughs> yeah the eruption which right? the which at this chapter hasn't happened yet because again morge jumped the fucking gun exactly the same but one of these attacks is drawn with far far greater finality and force than the other i'd say the most obvious reason oda would depict kaido's defeat in a less visual yeah this is just uh, this, is just, this like is just scummy minutes, this is just him being scummy so yeah so... um uh morge can make good videos when he wants to morge is a smart guy uh but this uh this video was uh not it no dude I, uh, woo, I, we we, I, we extended uh, it woo. Yay, it's like <laughs> almost an hour and a half now that's woo, good so leave your comments specifically yeah. uh dragon ball ones would be really nice. yes dragon ball ones like i am now i think uh one third through no not one third uh sorry uh one fifth through dragon ball now and actually since we're going to be talking about toriyama in general maybe you have takes on some other things like for example chrono trigger is my favorite video game and Dragon Quest is a cool series. Shit, should I also play Chrono Trigger before this thing? <laughs> I don't know if you, don't. I never played Chrono don't, Trigger before. Please don't rush playing Chrono Trigger. It's good. Take your time with it. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any one, dude, piece I want to. I want to find. Opinions. I want to find the three people on the planet who have Doctor Slump hot takes. <laughs> Oh, yo, if you have read enough Dr. Slump to have hot takes on it, please. <laughs> I, I have read all of Dr. Slump now, so I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. Oh, uh, yeah.
All right. And we're done. Uh, yep. Uh, goodbye.